Welcome to you, Andrew. Thank you, Ian. How much is the uh, damage that's being done in the BVI? It, it's quite devastating. Of the 10 staff that we have in the BVI, almost all of them have had their houses completely destroyed. Our office is completely destroyed. That's not a lonely story in BVI. It is devastating. So how much is the clean-up cost going to be, do you think? It's going to be, well, very expensive. I think it's well too early right now to put an estimate on it, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was in the billions. The billions. And... What about the BVI government themselves? How much of that are they going to be able to stump up and how much is going to end up with British taxpayers? Well, we've got to remember that BVI is part of Britain. They are British citizens, they are part of us and we are part of them. That would be like asking when the floods happen in the north of England, how much should the north of England stump up? No, of course, we, as British people and the British government, we should be supporting the British Virgin Islands. It's been suggested in one or two places. I mean, the Financial Times this morning, for example, said this could create a fraudster's paradise because you won't be able to do any sort of company searches for a year or so, such as being the damage to infrastructure over there. Well, all of that sort of data is duplicated, so you should be able to do all that duplicated search. It's not a problem. You know, every reasonable company, every reasonable data protection organisation has... Uh, disaster plans in place for duplication of all that information. So that should, should be fine. Another suggestion that's been doing the rounds today is that, hang on, if the BVI is going to require all this money from mm. British taxpayers, the BVI is a bit of a tax haven. I mean, as such, it sucks away revenues from other jurisdictions, including the UK. Shouldn't they give up some of that tax secrecy in return for aid from the UK government? Well, would you be suggesting that London pays for its own emergency relief because it's wealthier than the rest of Britain? I go back to the basic point. These are British people suffering a natural disaster. We should help them. 20% of people on the British Virgin Islands are classified as low-income people. So why would we try and put an extra burden on some of the poor poorest British people around the world because they've suffered a natural calamity. To be frank, I think that's a despicable suggestion. Even though the BVI does suck, suck tax revenues away from other countries, the including BVI the UK. Island, the BVI does exactly what the Parliament in Westminster allows the BVI to do. Right. So should Westminster be saying to the BVI, look, you've got to raise your game in terms of secrecy? They can, but that's a separate issue. Why would you put a question of tax up in a time when people are suffering? when their houses have been blown away, when their food is uncertain and when their water is uncertain. There is an appropriate time to talk about, talk about the, the, the tax structure of BVI. Now is not it. Now is about helping the British people on the British Virgin Islands get back on their feet. So what are the sort of things that you'd like to see the British government doing then? We need to help restart the local economy in the British Virgin Islands as soon as we can. It's one of the reasons we've set up the charity uh, uh, Legal Aid for British Virgin Island, legalaid4bvi.com, legalaid4bvi.com. And what we need to make sure is you get emergency medicines in on place, as the British government is doing now, as early as they can. And to be frank, the British government's doing a very, very good job, given that Hurricane Jose was coming in right behind uh, Hurricane Irma. But we then need to make sure that we transition from relief to recovery in a way that does not upset or hinder the local economy, in fact, in a way that encourages the local economy. For example, you don't want to put a whole lot of supplies free into the British Virgin Islands because then you'll put every hardware store out of business. We actually want to put it through the wholesale system to allow the local economy to get up and running, and I would encourage the British government to do as much cash transfer as it possibly can, it can again, to put money into the economy to get the local economy up and running as fast as we possibly can. And presumably everyone should think about going on holiday. There. Absolutely. And here's the critical thing. The lessons that we take from Pacific Islands when cyclones go through the Pacific Islands is the second disaster is when people don't go on holidays. So I'd say this to the British people. If you want to help people in the British Virgin Islands, donate to charities such as LegalAidForBVI.com, but also take your Christmas holidays there. By the time Christmas comes around, the people in the British Virgin Islands will be up and ready and willing to host you. So spend your time there. 45% of the economy in the British Virgin Islands is tourism, so let's help get their tourist market up and running. And wouldn't it be nice if Richard Branson and Virgin, for example, and he's suffered a lot of punishment as well, would open direct flights between the United Kingdom and the British Virgin Islands as a way to encourage more tourism. Well, there you go, Richard Branson, there for watching. Good message to you there, Andrew McLeod. Thanks for joining Thank me. Thank you, Ian. Thanks.